someone who loves his golf, Scott Berger now. Welcome back to Rugby HQ. Good evening, everyone. Do you, you love your golf too, don't you? You yeah, reckon well, you could take Dave well, Dennis? Well, uh, I'm not too sure. Um, his biceps looks pretty big there. Eh? So <laughs> we were out on uh, Moor Park golf, golf course. Unfortunately, lost, uh, lost a lot of money. So not an ideal start to my week. Got a, a few shots of you here at home. Apart from the fact you stand on the wrong side of the ball, um, <laughs> you go OK. Yeah, I go all right. I'm off a 10 handicap. Um, not the greatest. The swing looks pretty good there. <laughs> Wait till I hit the ball. It doesn't look so good. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to wear that shirt on an uh, Australian golf course. No collar. No, it's pretty relaxed back in Cape yeah, Town, yeah. eh? Yeah. Looks like your sister wants that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You're welcome to Fox welcome. Sports. Oh, oh, that's terrific. Um, now, we spoke to you about the illness and the recovery last year when you were here, but uh, just a couple of weeks ago, you brought up your 100th Super Rugby game. Um, did that give you pause for, for thought and... Perhaps you took a moment to think how grateful you were because a couple of years ago it was never going to happen. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a couple of years ago was in a bit of strife. Um, obviously, come a long way since then. So playing your hundredth is, you know, I was stuck in the nervous nineties in cricketing terms for a couple of years, you know, which is not ideal. You know, I think you, know, you should take leave out A.B. de Villiers' book and just blast the six and get <laughs> through it. But for me, it didn't work out that way. But you know, getting the hundredth was nice. Obviously, after the game, you had time to reflect, and you know, it's been a long, long journey, and uh, I've got a good story to tell. But I uh, got to get to a hundred finally, and uh, you know, now that carries on. You know, so played against Ma Nanu last weekend, who played his hundred and fiftieth, so he's a fair way ahead of me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, mate, can I tell, ask somebody, you might be able to give us lessons here in Australian rugby. You guys have had flexible contracts where you can go overseas and come back and play for the box. We're just diving into the shallow end of doing it now. What advice from South Africa, the lessons learned? Um, well, in South Africa, I think part of the challenge is keeping talent there. You know, obviously, exchange rate, etc., makes it tough for us. So I think, you know, the union has been pretty open, sending guys abroad, um, Japan is a good example. Does Getting the back them, or does the manager, their manager send oh, them? Oh, probably the manager. Okay. Um, but the players have a negotiation. They go across to Japan, like my deal now, come back and play for the Stormers. So uh, other, other, you know, if it worked otherwise, I don't think I would be able to play for the Stormers still. You know, I probably would have been stuck in Europe somewhere. Um, obviously, you know, the Springboks are open. They select players based abroad. So you know, it's a different challenge. I think every, every one of us are unique and we're different. You know, New Zealand's got a set way. Uh, the IU's got a set way, so whatever makes it work, uh, I suppose. Skulk, how do you manage, um, with that endless sort of winter, how do you manage your body and staying, you know, at a reasonable level? Oh, yeah, well, I stopped training on Mondays, I suppose. That helps a hell of a lot. Um, yeah, but look, your training does get tough, you know, if, especially if you do it year-round, like I've been doing it now. But, you know, the games are still great fun. You know, the games are where you stimulate it, you 100% into it. Uh, obviously, at the Stormers now, we've got a, a very younger squad, um, so I'm a bit of an older statesman there, um, so they love training, so I'm trying to, to, to you know, keep in touch, but uh, battling a bit, to be honest. Well, the big, the big difference, though, is when players play offshore, that the Springboks select them, where we haven't got that luxury yet, and that's something we may move to, but um, I want to ask you about the, the Springbok team. Um, have you had any camps yet uh, for Rugby World Cup? Because I know the Wallabies have had one last week and one early in the season, getting the squad of sort of 50-odd players together. Um, there's been one. Uh, yeah. I missed it. I was still stuck in Japan. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's going to be a few of them. Obviously, uh, you know, mentioned earlier, the Springbok players are all having a rest in a certain period. You know, so Dwayne familian has gone back. Yeah. You know, he's got a few weeks. He's got to rest up, uh, as for quite a few guys involved in the system. So, um, yeah, they're all starting to work together, and I think they're trying just to get all the players that might be involved on the same page. Are you, are you surprised that Australia is not going down that track? New Zealand is. Uh, and some might say that Australia doesn't have the depth that perhaps South Africa and New Zealand have should injuries come about. Are you, are you surprised that we're not doing that? I think injuries, you're not going to prevent injuries by it, but I think you might refresh the player, but you know, mentally I know that a lot of players in that week or two weeks they get off, they actually get away. You know, they go on a holiday or uh, you know, do something else. Um, New Zealand's been doing it for a long, long time. I think they're the guys who started it in the Southern Hemisphere. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, everyone's got their unique challenges. You know, Australia's set on the way they want to do it. You know, South Africa now, for the first time in a while, are actually pulling players and, and having, letting them have a rest. So, it's, you know, it's, I think it's good for the players. I think it keeps the players, you know, refreshed 
um, for the season, the yeah. long, long season. Mate, very quickly, we know you, you love your golf, but what about your winery um, back in um, South Africa? What's that like? And you brought out a new wine recently? Or? Oh No, a while ago, but the, a family business, yep. so everyone's there except me, um, so it's got his own challenges, yeah. obviously. Didn't you have a bottle that came out with number six? Uh, number six, Does yeah. probably changed to seven and eight now? Or, or maybe 19, to no, be yeah, honest. Sure. <laughs> 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 the, the number's getting higher and yeah. higher, hey. Hopefully it doesn't go to four or five. You, you know, <laughs> then I would have been playing rugby for too long. Hey, listen, you guys had a good start to the season. Not so good over... Well, you were in a right in the uh, second half last week, but this weekend you've looked at the Waratahs. What do you make of them, especially their last game? They were so physically dominant. Yeah, tough side to play. Uh, obviously, quality from 1 to 15 or 1 to 23 this weekend, really. And we had two guys, on, blokes on the bench, has played probably more caps than you know, our entire team, basically. So, uh, tough side. You know, uh, defensively, they come off the line really hard and they, they, they sort of rush you uh, into making mistakes, putting in big hits, and then attack. You know, their forwards are really direct, uh, and then the backs have got X-factor all around the park. So we've had a look at them, and it's a tough challenge for us. We're a young side, and uh, we're also going through a bit of a transition phase in our game where you know, we're starting to play a bit more. I think something similar to the Waratahs did a few years ago. So you know, if we play well, I think we'll, uh, we'll put them under pressure in certain phases of the game. What does a humble back grower make of that transformation when you guys are running it out of your own half a lot more? Um, yeah, look, obviously the involvement of every single player gets uh, a lot more. Um, so I've been enjoying it. I think I'm, um, I'm part of this you know, new, new phase we're going through. You're trying just keeping to up, play, aren't you, Scott? Trying to keep up. You know, that's the big thing. Um, but, you know, you've got to, I think all of us strive for balance. and You've got to get a certain balance in the game. And um, I think at the moment our balance is not quite perfect, but I think it's getting better. Did this come from a a reassessment of where the game has got to and maybe the Stormers looked and they thought we've been fantastic defensively for so many years it hasn't won us a title did you did you have to evolve I think it comes with errors I think the previous generation of Stormers players we were really successful for what we did back then and I think now if you look back from 2010 to now we've only got three players left in the Stormers groups there's a whole new generation coming through and it's to find a, a style that suits that generation and, and the style we're going towards now um, is finding that nice balance between attack and defence at the moment probably overly dominated by uh, attack. Well hold on you talk about style you've got no Dwayne Vermeulen and so much of your go forward is generated by him what do you do this weekend without him? Well we'll find someone else to take it forward hey, we, have, we have to so Dwayne obviously phenomenal player you know, and in, in form of his life, playing well. But, you know, in, in saying that, we've got good loose forwards. You know, we've got Nizam Carr playing. Nizam Carr's been named tonight. Yeah, playing number eight. playing eight. And Michael Rhodes playing um, uh, seven. Uh, obviously, our numbers work the other way around. So mm. I'm in six, so playing open side this weekend. Oh, very so good. let's let's luck against Michael Hoover. Oh, look, tough challenge. <laughs> Let, let's see if I can keep up. <laughs>